Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today, what we're going to show you is a modification I'm going to do to my dual swing out rear CBI bumper. I've always wanted the ability to use a bike carrier with my 98 Forerunner, but it just didn't seem to work out that well using the existing hitch carrier that's on the CBI bumper because the bike carrier is gonna be in the way of the swing outs opening. So every time my bike is on the back of my truck and I wanna open up the swing out so I can get access to the rear cargo area, I'd have to remove the bike and then drop the carrier down a little bit to where I can open the swing outs and open the rear hatch. And I thought that's gonna be a pain in the butt because the goal is on wheeling trips, we could also do some mountain biking. My buddy Way, who's here today and is gonna help me with this job, we both like to go four wheeling and we both like mountain biking. So we thought the best of both worlds is to do a trip that includes both of them. And so you're not just sitting in your truck all day getting fat, you get to get out every day and get some exercise too on your mountain bike, which would be a great thing. We actually have a trip planned to Moab coming up pretty soon where it's gonna be just that, a combination of four wheeling and mountain biking because Moab has great wheeling and great mountain biking. So it's a mecca for what we like to do. So what we're gonna show you is how to weld on a two inch hitch receiver to one of the swing arms of the bumper and then we've got some quarter inch plate metal to use as gussets to reinforce it to where it'll have more strength so the weight of the carrier and the weight of the bike isn't going to be able to eventually break the swing out or break the welds so these are the two pieces of material that we had to buy in order to accomplish this job so now let's get out to the rig and i'm going to show you where i plan on welding on this two inch receiver to my CBI dual swing out bumper. So here's my CBI rear dual swing out bumper as it sits right now. I have my spare tire on the right swing out and then on the left swing out I have a jerry can holder and I have my high lift jack and a high lift jack base connected to that swing out as well. The place where I plan on welding on the new two inch receiver is right here on the left swing out. You can see the original two inch receiver right here. And looking at this from a side profile, you would see how long you would have to make an extension to be able to connect up a bike carrier to that two inch receiver on the bumper. You could easily see also if the bike carrier is here, when I want to open the swing out, you can see that the bike carrier will be in the way and the bike would have to come off. That's not ideal. Right here is where the two inch receiver is going to go on this left side swing out. I already figured out some measurements of where I want to affix it. What I plan on doing, I'm going to have an extension coming off the back side so I can put a gusset right here to give more reinforcement instead of just cutting it flat right here and then maybe welding a plate. I figured a little bit of an extension on the back side with the gusset would make it stronger. And then on the underside here, there's gonna be another big gusset that goes here. We might put one other gusset right here to give a little bit more rigidity to it, but we're not sure if we're gonna add that third gusset right here. This two inch receiver I bought via Amazon is a two footer, it's 24 inches. If I could have found an 18 inch one for sale, I would have bought that, but at the time when I was searching for one of these two inch receivers, I couldn't find a 18 inch one, so I went ahead and bought a 24 inch one, and you can see how much of it I'm gonna have to cut off. It's quite a bit, so it's kind of a waste of material, but Hopefully I'll find some use for this extra material at a later date. The way I came up with the measurements of how long this piece needed to be is I grabbed a couple big carpenter's clamps. I didn't have any regular metal C clamps that I could use that were big enough to capture all the material I needed to capture. And then I have my one up rack slid into the receiver and you can see that it's fully buried into the two inch receiver right here. So it's got the maximum support. And what I used as the limiting factor to know how long I can make it was how the rack was gonna interface with the jerry can holder. I wanted to get the bike rack as close as possible without hitting this carrier. This is gonna be enough room 
to be able to get the bike on there without the bike interfering with the jerry can holder or the right swing out with the spare tire on it. They're both gonna be enough out of the way. A nice feature of these racks is you don't have to keep them in the extended version all the time. You can fold them to where they fold up to a narrower profile when you're not carrying a bike. With the way I'm gonna have this thing set up, I'm gonna lose that ability because of the jerry can holder getting in the way of the bike rack. But that's okay because this vehicle is not my primary vehicle that I'm gonna be taking biking trips with. Normally, I use my 2000 Forerunner that doesn't have an aftermarket bumper on it. It's mostly all stock. And that's my primary vehicle that I use to go on bike trips. This is just gonna be so on a combination four-wheeling trip and mountain biking trip, I have the ability to carry the bike in the back rather than trying to carry it up on the roof, which isn't ideal, especially if you have any low canopy problems like with branches from trees and stuff. And also the bike is way more secure on a bike carrier like this than wobbling around on the top, sticking way up high. It's just a much more secure way to transport the bikes on a carrier like this. The one thing that had me concerned about doing this modification is would the bike carrier be sticking out too much? And I don't think that's gonna be the case because even when you have the bike rack centered on a bumper, the bike is still longer than the actual bike carrier and the bike tires are gonna be the things that are gonna still be sticking out the most and you can't get around that. You just gotta be careful when you're four wheeling with the bike on the back that you know that the bike tires are gonna be the things on both sides that are gonna be sticking out the most. In some cases, it might be prudent to take your bikes off the vehicle to get through a narrow constriction and then put them back on once you've negotiated the obstacle. So the fitment looks good to me. I'm gonna cut the end off right here using my DeWalt angle grinder and a cutting disc and then afterwards clean it up with a grinder disc. All right, I have eye protection. I've got my DeWalt angle grinder with the cutting disc and I'm gonna lop off the end of this two inch receiver. Also use some earplugs or some earmuffs because using this thing cutting metal is pretty loud and you don't wanna lose any of your hearing like me and be going, hey, what'd you say? Here it goes, watch out. And there it is, it's off. Instead of using the big DeWalt angle grinder, I'm gonna use this Milwaukee M12 die grinder instead because this will be a little bit better to get in here to smooth out all the edges instead of using a big disc. And then for the inside, I'm just gonna use a file to smooth out the sharp edges. That's feeling pretty good. Now that we have the receiver cut to the length we want, I'm gonna use a strip disc with my DeWalt angle grinder and I'm gonna clean up all the areas where I'm gonna be welding. So I marked here, and here, I'm gonna have to clean up on the sides here. I'm gonna have to clean up a strip right here where I'm gonna weld the gusset. And then on the front side, I'm gonna have to clean up here and then for the gusset here. I'm only gonna remove enough paint to where I could get a good weld. I don't wanna remove more paint than I need to because this has been powder coated. It's gonna add some extra rust protection. So I'm only gonna remove enough paint to where I can get clean metal where I'm gonna be welding. Okay, it looks like I got all the areas that I need to clean off on the swing out. Now what I wanna do is clean up the receiver itself. Even though this is bare metal, it has mill scale on it and you wanna get this as clean as possible too so you get the strongest possible welds. So I'm gonna now clean up this piece. 
you'll get a cleaner paint on it too if you just clean up all that real skill. For this job, we're gonna be welding different width materials. And so what I learned when I first started learning how to weld is you have to set your welder to the smaller size. Most of this is gonna be 3 16 to a quarter. The receiver is about 3 16 It doesn't quite slide over, but when I go to the quarter inch, it wobbles in there. So I'm gonna call this 3 16 Part of the bumper swing out I'm gonna be welding on is quarter inch, and then another part is closer to 10 gauge or 11 gauge. So when I make that weld where I'm gonna be welding this receiver to the thinner part of the swing out, I'm gonna to have to lower the setting. So right now on my Hobart welder, I'm using 024 wire. When you look at the cover and it gives you all the numbers you need for the different size materials and what voltage you're using. So I'm gonna be using 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide and I'm going to be welding at 230 volts. 024 wire is the top one and if I scroll over at 3 16 I have to be welding at a setting of 6 with a wire speed of 80. And then when I weld the smaller material closer to an eighth inch or 11 gauge I'm going to lower the welding setting to 5 setting on the voltage and 70 for the wire speed. So here's the fun part I actually get the weld. Let's see how I do. How we have it set up right now on the swing arm is we have a magnetic tool here that's helping us keep this rear gusset in place. And we're gonna tack the gusset onto the swing arm and then onto the receiver first because we noticed that we could easily get this thing tilted the wrong way and then it's not gonna be square by first putting this rear gusset in and having this rear gusset square to the swing arm and square to the receiver, then that'll be a good starting point. And then we can start putting in more tacks and then tack in the front gusset too. All right, I've got three tacks in here and then now I can safely remove the magnet and then start tacking it in other places. We now have the front gusset in place, held on with one of these strong 90 degree magnets, and now I'm gonna tack the front gusset to the receiver and tack it to the swing arm. Okay, I've got four good tacks holding the gusset to the swing arm into the receiver. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bike carrier on here and just make sure that the bike fits okay and everything looks good before we start laying down a bunch of beads. We have the swing arms closed and we have the bike carrier on. And even though this hitch that we just tacked on is eight inches off center towards the driver's side. If you take a shot down the edge of the vehicle, the edge of the one up carrier really isn't sticking out past the body, which is good. And the nice thing about these one up carriers is you can adjust where the bike sits on the carrier because of the ratcheting function of the rack. So with this rack, I can open up the arm and then what I plan on doing is I plan on cheating the bike over this way. Because it's offset this way eight inches, I'm just gonna cheat over the bike towards the passenger side to where on the driver's side, the wheel isn't gonna be sticking way the hell out there. So if I cheat it back over towards the passenger side, I can get the wheel sticking out equally on both sides of the vehicle. So that's what makes the one-up carrier really nice for a situation like I'm doing on my 98 Foreigner with the receiver offset of center. So one final thing is I'm gonna drive my rig out further into the driveway and put a bike on, let's see how it fits. So here's my mountain bike on the carrier and if we cheat it over towards the passenger side, so right now the tire is pretty much equal sticking out to the actual rack itself and that's kind of what we want because we don't wanna stick out too much further this way and then by having the bike on the carrier sticking further out this way, it's pretty much equal to the passenger side of the vehicle, so this will work. We decided we're also gonna put a gusset right here. This was just a piece of angle iron that I had as scrap metal. It would be nicer if it went the full width of the receiver, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack this in place, 
and then I'm going to start welding all the thinner material first. So this part of the swing out is thinner material. It's about 11 gauge and then this part is closer to quarter inch. So I'm going to weld everything that needs to be welded at the lower setting first and then I'm going to move up to the higher setting for the thicker material. I disconnected the negative terminal from the battery. Anytime you're welding, it's just good practice to disconnect the battery so you don't end up frying your ECU. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. Yeah, that looks good. We realized that we were going to be welding really close to this plastic license plate light. Because I didn't want to melt it potentially, we disconnected it and moved it over here, protecting it with a little painter's tape. And then we're protecting the wires with a little bit of electrical tape. And we have the wire pulled over to this side in the hole to where it's going to be further away from the heat. And hopefully that's going to stop me from messing up the wiring and the actual light itself. Here's what some of my welds look like. I'll show you the better looking ones first. <laughs> that one's pretty good. That one also looks pretty good. It was on the front side, I started having some issues. It wasn't sounding like sizzling bacon. It was kind of sporadic. And I don't know why, because I was welding with the same settings and the same material thickness. So who knows? There's our upper gusset. Some decent welds. I'm not gonna win any awards for them though. This is the front gusset. Here's the gusset welding on this side. Not super pretty, but okay. This is the worst weld of them all. This is where the sound was really bad and I had to layer in a few different beads in there. So it's pretty ugly, but I think it's gonna hold fine. And then this one, we did a little grinding on because we had a glob on there. But I would have to say I did a satisfactory job and it's gonna hold just fine. So now we're gonna let this cool down a little bit. We're gonna clean it up with some acetone and then we're gonna shoot it with some flat black spray paint. That's a combo primer and paint in one. Here's the bike carrier mod with a fresh coat of black spray paint. Looks pretty factory, I guess. All right, we have a couple bikes on here and they fit pretty good. They are gonna be sticking a little bit more out on the driver's side, but not so much to where I'm really concerned about it. If a car is this close to me, they're too close, basically. And then getting the two swing outs open, it's a little bit harder because now you gotta dive underneath to get to the latch, but it's not too difficult. And then it makes it a little weird because I can't be at the passenger side swing out, swinging it out first. I have to kind of pull it out like this and then grab each one of them. And then coming back in is a little bit weird too because normally I could just grab both of these together and it's really easy but with the bike carrier on there it's a little bit harder so you kind of just have to get them both going push them in place and then lock your latch it works so now we're going to go mountain biking we got back from our bike ride and one thing I noticed as soon as we started hitting some bumps in the road while I was driving with both the bikes on the rack, I noticed that there seemed to be some flexing going on. I could see the bikes kind of dipping down and that raised some red flags with me of an issue I was suspecting might happen with this type of modification. And what that problem is, is that the receiver hitch is pretty long, so it's a long fulcrum. Then you put a fairly heavy bike rack. I think this thing weighs in the neighborhood about 40, maybe at 50 pounds. I don't know the exact weight of this one up rack with the two bike carrier. And then you add two bikes that are in the neck of the woods at 25 to 30 pounds each. You have quite a bit of weight out on a long fulcrum and with you hitting bumps and dips in the road and say if you're on a rough trail, the amount of weight out on that long fulcrum, that long receiver hitch, it's allowing the whole left swing out to be flexing backwards like this. 
I was ready to scrap the whole idea of this working because I think with enough flexing for a long enough period of time, a couple things might happen. Number one, the U-bolt for the latching mechanism is going to eventually fatigue and fail like it's done before on trips on bumpy washboard roads. I found a couple times where the U-bolt broke and I luckily bring extras knowing that that could happen. Just from the weight of the jerry cans that are full of fuel and the weight of the spare tire, there's enough flex where it's slowly fatiguing that U-bolt and it breaks eventually. But with the extra weight with the bike rack and the bikes, I think that's gonna happen more quickly. Usually I only replace a U-bolt maybe once a year, maybe once every other year. It's not that often, but it all depends how much four wheeling I'm doing and how rough the trails are. Those really washboard roads I think are the worst. It's not like slow technical wheeling, it's the fast washboard roads that really beat the crap out of your vehicle. Way mentioned an option and it's not a sexy option, it's not a sick mod. It's something that will work but it's not going to get me any style points and it's using a ratchet strap that goes from the end of the rack and goes to the roof rack. So now the back end of this rack is being supported from the roof rack and it won't be able to flex as much and it works. Now it's going to be one extra thing I'm going to have to do when I want to open up the swing outs and get access to the rear cargo area, I'm going to have to undo this ratchet strap which kind of sucks but it's the only workaround we can think of that's going to work to allow us to still use this bike carrier system without eventually causing damage to the bumper swing outs or breaking U-bolts for the locking mechanism over and over and over again. So I think the ratchet strap option to help support this hitch carrier system that I came up with is going to be the lesser of all the evils in my opinion. Let me show you the flexing that's happening to this passenger side swing out without the support of the ratchet strap and then I'll show you what it looks like with the support. So what I'm going to be doing to mimic the amount of force that's happening when the vehicle's going over bumps and the weight of the bicycles are on this rack. I'm just gonna hang on this and flex it. And you'll be able to see the amount of movement that's happening on that driver's side swing out as I put my weight into it. You'll see the flexing that's happening. So you'll wanna be concentrating your vision right at that extension on the back side of the receiver hitch in relation to the rear hatch. You'll see it flexing forward. Now I have the ratchet strap in place and you can see it works out decently. The strap comes down at an angle from the roof rack and it doesn't impede on the bike at all. It's not rubbing on the bike. It's fitting right between the jerry can holder and the spare tire. And then it's running up to the roof rack and I have it hooked with a soft strap that wraps around the tubing at the top of the rack and then the hook captures it right there and as you can see i can still reach through here and release the mechanism to where i can free the rack of the ratchet strap and then i'll be able to open up both sides out to open up the rear hatch so i can get at what i need if i found reaching through the bikes was going to be a pain in the butt because i have two bikes on there i can reach this from the driver's side and i could operate the mechanism no problem Either way, from the rear or from the side, or even I could jump up onto the bumper and reach down and grab this. There's several ways I can get to that release mechanism when it comes time to release it so I can open up the swing outs and get to the rear cargo area. So now with the ratchet strap supporting the bike rack, I'm gonna now jump on the back end of it again, putting my weight into it, and you're gonna see that there is little to no flex now happening with the swing out. It's pretty sturdy. I bought these ratchet straps at Home Depot, they're the Husky brand. The two pack of these I think was only like 10 bucks. And then I bought a couple extra soft connections that are a buck each. So I'll just keep this in my rig as extras in case anything happens to my ratchet strap system and I have to replace them out on the trail. All right, we are all done with this job. It didn't turn out as good as I hoped it would and what I suspected could be a problem with adding a bike carrier onto a very long hitch receiver actually happened. It is a little bit too much weight and a little bit too much mechanical advantage for that swing out to handle. So I was forced to come up with a solution in order to continue to use 
that bike carrying system and the only thing that Way and I could come up with is using a ratchet strap that hooks up to the bike carrier and then stretches up to the roof rack then giving it really good support so the weight of the bike carrier and the bikes can't flex that swing out and end up eventually maybe cracking the metal or just breaking a lot of those u-bolts that i've had break on me before like i said i do think it is the lesser of all the evils of possibilities to carry a bicycle when I'm out on a four wheeling trip. The roof rack option is not my favorite because the bike is way the hell up there. You have to be careful for overhead obstructions when you're going through tree canopies. And so I really don't like that one. And also I would actually have to ratchet strap the bars down to where the bike doesn't wobble back and forth on those type of carriers. The bike just moves like crazy. And so eventually you might end up breaking the rack or you might end up bending one of your wheels. The other option that I don't like is using the regular two inch receiver on the CBI bumper because if I want to get access to the rear hatch area, I have to remove the bicycles off the bike rack and then I have to actually remove the bike rack itself so I can open up the rear swing outs so I can access the cargo area that doesn't seem like a good option either so it is my decision to stick with this modification with the additional ratchet strap mod to support it and i think it's going to work out just fine i just don't think this qualifies as the sickest mod ever and i'm not going to get any major style points from people looking at the system because they're going to look at it and think it looks kind of janky with the ratchet strap supporting it but I'm one of those guys that's a function over form and if it functions okay, I don't really care if it looks a little janky. As long as it's working for my purpose to be able to bring my mountain bike on a four wheeling trip and to be able to carry it securely and not make it really hard for me to access the cargo area, then it's a win in my opinion. After I found out the limitations of this modification I did to my dual swing out CBI bumper, I thought. I'm just going to shit can this video, I'm not going to share this, but then I was thinking, well, maybe somebody else is going to have this idea that I actually picked up from my buddy Khan's bumper on his 100 series Land Cruiser. I can't remember the make of that bumper, but I saw that it had a 2 inch hitch carrier and it was made for a bicycle. So I thought, hey, I could do the same to my CBI bumper. Now I don't know if his bumper swing outs are made more sturdy where they have dual latching mechanisms where it supports it better i'm not sure that i don't know if his bumper would have the same problem of having the swing up flexing from the weight of the bike carrier and the weight of the bike or bikes if you were considering this modification to your swing out bumper you now know the possible limitations that you might also find that the weight of the bicycles and the weight of the bicycle rack is going to be too much and it's going to cause that swing out to flex a lot and then you might end up doing damage to your bumper and you'll be regretting that so this video is basically letting you know that it can be done but you're going to have to do something extra like i did with that ratchet strap to support the weight so the bumper doesn't get damaged while you're carrying your bicycle to whatever adventure you're going on with all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special guest Way. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and sick bumper alterations. Peace out. Happy wrenching. Bye-bye.